Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to talk all about acids. Now I chose this picture here to remind us that acids are really important in the human body. In our stomach, they're used to help us digest foods. So we have a few learning goals here today. To identify acids from their names and formulas, to determine the name of oxoacids and binary acids from their formulas, and to determine the formulas of oxoacids and binary acids um, from their names. So let's talk about the difference between a binary acid and an oxoacid, or sometimes oxoacids are also referred to as oxyacids. So a binary acid has hydrogen and a non-metal. So an example would be something like HCl, hydrogen and then the non-metal chlorine. Oxoacids have hydrogen, a non-metal, and then also oxygen attached to it. So an example would be H3PO4. Now usually we see th that the um, non-metal and the oxygen, we can recognize those from our polyatomic compounds. So PO4 is phosphate, so we might actually recognize a lot of the um, oxoacids from the polyatomics list. So let's talk about our binary acids first. How do we name these? Well, there are two different methods. This is the first method, and you can write these steps down, pause the video, write these steps down, or you can just look at the diagram, which I'll explain. So the first is that you would write the prefix hydro, and then you add, would add the stem of the non-metal, and add the ending or the suffix ic, I-C, and then write the word acid after. So this is one way to name the binary acids. The second option is to start off by writing the word aqueous, and then writing the word hydrogen, then writing the stem of the non-metal with the ending or the suffix I-D-E. So those are our two options. I'll go through a couple examples showing both ways of naming the binary acids. So we'll start off with HF. So we recognize from here that our non-metal is fluorine. So if we're using our first method, we would start off by writing hydro. The stem of fluorine is fluor, so hydrofluor, and then we add the ic ending, so hydrofluoric, and then we add the word acid. So here we end up with hydrofluoric acid. The second method, we would write the word aqueous, then we would write the word hydrogen, and then we need the stem, which is still fleur, and then we would add the ending IDE. So we end up with aqueous hydrogen fluoride. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have HCl. Cl we recognize as our non-metal. So if we start off with the first method, we would write hydro as the prefix. We need the stem of the non-metal for chlorine, that's chlor. So hydrochlor, and then we add the ic. So hydrochloric and then we add the word acid, hydrochloric acid. For the second method, we would write aqueous, then hydrogen, and then we write the stem chlor, and add the ending IDE. So we end up with aqueous hydrogen chloride. Let's take a look at our, pol or sorry, with our oxoacids this time. For our oxoacids, there are many different types. We're gonna focus in only on the oxoacids with polyatomic ions that end in a, T, E. So there are many others that we could look at, but for this course we're going to focus in on the ones where the polyatomic anion ends in A, T, E. If you take chemistry in grade 11 or grade 12, you'll learn about the different types of acids. So here you're going to write the stem of the polyatomic ion, and then write the suffix I, C, and then write the word acid. So if we take a look at an example here, we have HNO3. We can recognize from here that NO3 is the polyatomic anion. And if we look on our polyatomic anion list, we can see that this is called nitrate. So if we take the stem of nitrate, that's nitrure, we take the AT off, ATE off, and then we add IC. So it becomes nitric, and then we add the word acid. So nitric acid. If we take a look at this next example, we recognize that CrO4 is the polyatomic anion, and that's called chromate. If we remove the ending 8, then we end up with chrome. We add the suffix IC, so we get chromic and then acid. So chromic acid is the name of that acid. 
There are a couple irregular stems. So for carbonate, we would call it carbonic acid. For sulfate, it's sulfuric acid. And phosphate is phosphoric acid. So you'll need to, rem you'll need to memorize those three because they do go slightly against the normal rules of what the um, stem of the word would be. So let's take a look at how we would write the formulas. So again, you can write down all these instructions if you'd like, or just go through the diagrams with me. So here we would write H. We know that for acids, H is always the cation. So we'll write H, and then the number required as a subscript, and we can use either zero sum or crossing over method to figure out what that subscript will be. Then we write the anion, and this may be a polyatomic anion, or it may be just a regular non-metal. And then we write the number required as a subscript. If it does happen to be a polyatomic anion, we need to remember to use those brackets before we write the subscript. And then we write the um, ending AQ. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have bromic, or sorry, hydrobromic acid. So we recognize here from the hydro that this is H, and H has a 1 plus charge based on its position in the periodic table. Bromic, that comes from the word bromine, so we're dealing with Br, which based on its uh, location in the periodic table has a 1 negative charge. So we can use either of our two methods, and you don't need to write both of these down, but I'm going to go through both steps. So if we use the zero sum method, we know that the hydrogen has a 1 plus charge and the bromine has a 1 negative charge and overall that equals 0. Well we're aiming for this to equal 0 so we know that we need 1 of the hydrogens and 1 of the bromines and so H, B, R since we have 1 of each we don't write subscript 1 so we just leave it as is and then we write the subscript AQ now we could also use the crossing over method. So here we would write our H, B, R beside each other, take the um, charge of the hydrogen and use it as a subscript for bromine, take the charge of the bromine and use it as a subscript for the hydrogen. Now because they're subscript ones, we don't write them down, so we would end up with H, B, R, and again we write the subscript A, Q. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have another binary acid using the second way of naming, aqueous hydrogen fluoride. So we have hydrogen, which is our H+, and we have fluorine, which is our F-, so it has a one negative charge. And using our first zero sum method, hydrogen with a one plus charge added to fluorine with a one negative charge gives us a, zero su or a sum of zero, which is what we are looking for. So that means we need one hydrogen and we need one fluoride ion, so together that makes HF, and we use the subscript AQ. Again, we don't write subscript 1, so it's just HF. If we tried the crossing over method, we write our two letters beside each other, we take the charge of the hydrogen, use it as a subscript for fluorine, the charge of the fluorine, use it as a subscript for the hydrogen, we don't write our subscript 1s, so we just end up with HF, and then we write our subscript AQ. Let's take a look at an oxo acid this time. Here we have phosphoric acid. So we recognize from the phosphor part that we're dealing with PO4. And this we could look up in our polyatomic anions list. Now PO4, that's phosphate, and it has a three negative charge. That information is also on your polyatomics list. Now because we're dealing with an acid, we know that the cation is going to be H+. So we can use either of our methods. Let's start off with the zero sum. We have one hydrogen with a one plus, and then we have a phosphate with a three negative. If we add that together, we get negative two. Since we're aiming for the sum of zero, we need some more positive charges. If we had three of the hydrogens, so three times plus one, and then we add the negative 3, that will give us 0. So that means we need 3 hydrogen, or 3 protons, and we need 1 phosphate. So if we put that together, we end up with H3PO4, and then we add our subscript AQ. Now we can do the same with the crossing over method. 
we'll write all of our letters beside each other. Whoops, P O four. And we use our charge on the hydrogen as um, a subscript for the phosphate and a charge on the phosphate as the subscript for the hydrogen. Now we don't write the subscript one after the phosphate, so we just end up with H3PO4 and then we add the subscript AQ. And one last example here, sulfuric acid. We recognize sulfuric acid. The sulfur part comes from sulfate, which is SO4. And if we look in our polyatomics list, it has a two negative charge. The word acid tells us that the cation is a proton, so we end up with H+. And if we use our zero sum method, we can add the one plus to the negative two. That gives us a negative two charge. We need more positive charges. So if we have two protons and we add that to the negative two charge, we end up with zero. Since we've achieved zero, we know that we need two of the protons and one of the sulfate ions. So we end up with H2SO4 with a subscript AQ. Using our zero sum method, we'll write all the letters together. And then we'll use the charge on the hydrogen as a subscript for the sulfate. Now we don't write subscript one, so we leave it as it is. The charge on the sulfate as the subscript for the hydrogen. So we end up with H2SO4 with a subscript AQ. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you identify acids from their names and formulas? Can you determine the name of oxoacids and binary acids from their formulas? And can you determine the formulas of oxoacids and binary acids from their names? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.